Hello, this is a, uh, the third part to understanding Frazetta. wanted to talk about his sketches. I got a request to talk about what I thought about his sketches and the way he did things. What I think is interesting about the way he sketches is he looked like he was very careful. You know, um, in animation, they always talk to you about the line of action. Whenever you draw a figure, like something like this, you'd always want to Start with the line of action. And everything should support that line. For an example, like kind of like Mickey Mouse. And let me use a black pen so you guys can understand. Um, I was mentored by Dale Bear. And he did this drawing of Mickey Mouse. And like everything had to follow this line of action. All the way to his ears. I mean... I've heard about using the line of action in animation, but I just didn't know how extreme to use it. And uh, they'll always, sorry, I haven't drawn Mickey Mouse in a while. Yeah, but they'll always make sure he drew from a line of action. Everything supported the damn thing. Even the tail, the tail went this way. Every drawing was like that in animation. Anyway, well, even the hand, right? And this is the world that I come from in animation, and you know, and I and I still do this. Um, when he, when I was working on like Scrooge McDuck, on Ducktales, this is what I taught my guys too. You know, like line of action, even to the toes, down here. Yeah, three, right. This is how extreme I was in the making of this stuff. It's what I was taught at Disney's. I was going to make sure we all did it as a crew. Anyway. All right, I was supposed to draw Scrooge. <laughs> See if I can still draw the guy. Scrooge was the Scrooge was the villain that we loved. I mean, that guy always said he was the filthiest duck in the world. I thought that was always funny. Anyway. Sorry, this is not a post on DuckTales, but I just wanted to make my point about the line of action. Okay? And how extreme to be. Um, here, Frank didn't really do that from what it looks like. If you see the way his lines, what they're actually supporting are shapes. I saw these life drawing pieces he did over here. I thought these were really interesting. Not these, these. We're not going to learn from those other ones. This is the rich stuff here. Look at that. Simple shapes. She's twisting, and he's describing that with simple shapes here, too. On top of that, I don't see the line of action anywhere. But that's not to say that's a bad thing. I learned a lot from this. Now, I found in animation, that's the only way to do it, you know, the way my mentor told, uh, taught me. He told, you know, he comes from hard school, the, the hard school of Preston Blair and all these other guys. But I read a book on Don Bluth where John Lonsbury, one of the nine old men, went to Milt Call and he asked him if he can draw him a key. He said he was amazed how Milt drew the silhouette first. 
And that, that I, then I was like, oh, so there's more than one way to do this stuff. I thought there was just, you know, one way that, you know, the line of action. Apparently not. Milt drew the silhouette first. So then I was like, okay. And then I had another friend. His name is uh, Chris. Uh, he's a uh, an awesome animator way forward. He would draw he would draw figures like this. Very loose figures. Simple. And I would say, hey man, some of these are pretty cool poses. How how do you how are you doing this? You know, like, what, what are your thoughts when you're doing this? And he said, well, I can't draw the line of action, so all I do is draw the shapes. And I found that very fascinating. And these look really pushed, you know? I was like, wow. I, I didn't know you can get such pushed drawings with the silhouettes alone and just thinking of design in negative spaces. I had no clue. And then I was, and you know, had I do a drawing like this of somebody, you know, jumping up in the air or whatever, I'd have done the line of action and, you know, the circles like they teach you in all those books. I'd have drawn the Marvel way and you'd have done something like that. The problem is, is that when you're doing these things, you see how specific and structure you're getting already? And, and, it, and then the drawing starts to get really jumbly, you know? Like, look, I'm trying to be loose here, right? But look how much information I'm putting down. And then, you know, I'm losing what, what I was trying to do. My intent was to get some guy to jump. And it's being lost with all this work here. Here, now, I can do the line of action right here. Very simple. I can still get my line. What I found very fascinating about this, too, is that let's get the same silhouette. I can change the line of action, you know, subtle. This is pushed this way, this is pushed this way, and it's still the same shape. And I thought, you know, I, I thought that was very fascinating. So it, you know, if I, if I had a ball, you know, it, I mean, this is how I was looking at it. The line of action can be here, it can be here, can be here as long as the silhouette shape is strong you're good and um so i found out that frank actually does this a lot too if you if you if you take a look at this figure here sorry if my image is kind of blurry look at that all shapes negative spaces it's freaking good I'm a big fan of this. Look at that. Simple. Just, just trying to say, I mean, what a, what, a, what a complicated gesture. And he's doing that all of these simple lines. And I like where he breaks, too. Look at the shoulder right here. And then he breaks here with the tricep, the bicep, form, smart. So good. Look at that. This here is like the majority of that complicated pose. And he does that with like two lines. It's brilliant. This one here too is kind of cool. If you can see. Look at that. That right there, the way the, the shoulder comes in. And then that's her breast. And then that's her arm. Smart. And you, you see this is just this weird, it's like this Picasso-like shape that describes the body. Just twisting. It's awesome. Same thing in animation. We do a pose and we're always trying to find like in our poses nice shapes and silhouettes and negative spaces. These are very nice drawings, but I, it's really hard for me to learn from it because they're so finished, right? 
or sketchy, whatever you want to call them, that they definitely reveal how much the guy knows. I mean, look at that. Everything felt like one shot. But it's those rough sketches that appeal to me the most, these simple ones here. I mean, that really surfaces up what he knows. I mean, he's really trying to solve some problems here. Ha, those are awesome too. Look at that. These are great shapes. Well, this, and this is the thing, right? Like the, the key to sketchiness, in my opinion, has a lot to do with how much you understand. You know, like Frank, Frank can be this sketchy and he's able to make out what he's going to do as a final product. Um, you know, if you, if, when you understand your anatomy, you know what you're doing, you can take a look at these figures and be like, ah, okay, I know what I'm going to do. But if you, if, you, if you don't know what you're doing, then you're going you're gonna to take a tough, you're going to take a big, like a big chunk of your time just working out your drawing, trying to figure out, learning as you go, and it's unfortunately that the drawings suffer for it, right? Here's an example. I remember when I used to draw like this. Um, uh, like, like I said, the, the, like the line of action. That's all these construction lines and feeling it out or whatnot. Get something else here. Oh wait, I'm not done yet. And it's almost like you're figuring out your drawing, you're finding out where the rib cage is at. And this is what I mean by, you know, you're instead of you performing and doing a cool drawing, you're worrying about, you know, hey, am I doing this right? Uh, you're drawing through your drawings and it becomes like this big exercise, almost like you're studying while you're trying to do a cool drawing. And the thing is that the drawing looks stressed out. And looky here, this is what I mean. Like I'm building a shoulder, I'm building a bicep, building, you know, I'm, I'm filling out this whole thing. And then eventually through maybe another piece of paper on top of this one, you know, I'll, I will finish my drawing. Or you can do what Frazetta is doing, which I think is a little bit more appealing. And instead of doing all that crazy lines or whatever, you, you're just a little bit more careful about where you're placing your lines, what you're trying to say with your drawing.
you know, I'm not drawing that line of action or anything. I'm, I'm letting, I'm letting the silhouette and the design kind of like rule this drawing here. Cool. Now I'm going to fill in the gaps, right? Keeps the drawing organic. In which I think, you know, Frank has in his work. Very, very, very organic. And then really all I'm depending on here is how much I understand. And here, see, I'm... I'm doing the silhouette too, trying to find, you know, nice design shapes, making sure my stuff tapers, wrist, wrist, thumb. What I like about this type of exercise too is that it, does, it it exercises your sensibility on your shapes and your design, and it also surfaces up um, where you need work. You know, like clearly I'm freaking out of it, but you know, it, that's a disaster. <laughs> well, I should have used pencil. And this is what I mean by. You know, like there is such a sense of like knowing too much and then your stuff becomes like this big like uh, walking anatomy thing. You know, I don't I don't want my guys to all look like a walking anatomy book. This pelvis right here. Fat around the knees. Let's fix that hand, bothers me. Anyway, that was a bad finger. <laughs> anyway. It's interesting, huh? Oh, this feels a little bit more meaty. And this one feels worked, really worked out, right? Um, same with the face. Like, you can do the same thing. Here, and I'll zoom in for this. Okay. You can get into it and work it out. Same way. And beat up your drawing. Right? Whatever. Or just hint at things.
right? Now my, my mind's going crazy, and right? I'm like, oh, there's so many things I can do here. And this is what I like about this approach. I created my boundaries here in the, in the design and the silhouette. You know, here's, you don't get to. You don't, your magic doesn't even really get to go wild. In fact, there's a means to just get it done so I can get my, do another version on top of this one. So here now it's like, I'm gonna give my, my, my brain some time, you know? It's like, hey, maybe his eyebrow can be a little higher. Give him an, an expression. Maybe give him a long nose. I like the part that I say maybe a lot. Because that's what keeps this stuff uh, um, spontaneous and fun, right? Jaw. I like this little information right here. It's kind of cool. some poor looking dude here. Sorry. Bear with me, my equipment sucks. I like to just do this just so I can create some mood and just feel loose. I don't like being too invested in my work. Let's do some more, more figure work, the silhouettes, right? I'm like filling in the gaps. Bicep, bicep, arm. Just rib cage. And I mean, a lot of this has to do, I mean, the reason why I could just spit a lot of these out is because, and this is what I have in my head. Spend my time doing this stuff. Right? 
these extremes. Anyway, thank you for geeking out with me. Another Frazetta session. I'll do another one. Uh, please uh, subscribe. Ask me questions. I like to share and geek out. And love this guy's genius. Cool. Thank you.